Okay, chemistry students, so here we go with lesson 7.2. We're going to look at converting masses of substances to moles and moles back to masses. So the objectives are for you to determine the number of moles of a substance from its mass and chemical formula, or given the number of moles of a substance, determine the mass of the substance. Again, you would need to know its chemical formula. So we're going to put together the mole idea with the molar mass and learn to go back and forth. Let's get started. So remember way back to the first marking period we taught you how to convert uh, like metric units and things like that. So let's do a brief review of conversion factors. So first of all a conversion factor is a fraction with a value equal to one. Granted the two numbers you divide them may not equal out to one, but they are things that are equivalent to like one another. Twelve like, inches is the same as one foot. Exactly, or there are a hundred centimeters in a meter. Those are equivalent things that all equal the same thing. So, so let's do a quick conversion using the fence post method. Let's say we want to go from I don't know five centimeters to just just do plain old meters equals some number of meters. Okay, so we're going to say how many meters is in five centimeters. Okay, now we need, this is our, our equivalence relationship we're drawing on here is the fact that 100 centimeters equals one meter. So from that we can build two conversion factors. We can write the fraction one meter over the denominator of 100 centimeters. That's, an, that's a conversion factor. It's equal to one. Or we could also say that 100 centimeters is the same as one meter. So we just need to choose the conversion factor that's going to get us to the desired end unit and cancel out the unit we don't want. So we want to put the one that has the one meter on top and the 100 centimeters in the denominator and the fence post method allows us to cancel the units, so we end up with the unit we want. We take 5 divided by 100, 0 0.05 meters. meters is the answer. And for those of you, I, in my class, I don't write it out like, I don't write it like this. I write it like 5 centimeters, that was a horrible centimeter, the actual fence post, and then you'd put the 100 centimeters and one meter like that. So that's, but it's really just two different the same, ways to show yeah. the same so thing. So this method here is is literally the fence post. This method is it's more... Dimensional analysis, yeah. I think it's called. It's the but same, same difference. Same just I wanted to show you both ways before we moved on, so you wouldn't be confused if you saw me doing it or Mr. Ferguson, since apparently so, both do slightly different. And the point is that we, we can use, this is a powerful tool that we use in chemistry, and especially in these mole problems, we're going to be changing from one thing to another using the conversion factor that we derive from the equivalence relationship. All right. All right, so this is our first example of this new type of conversion that we're doing. Uh, they, the molar masses, of course, are an equivalence relationship. So if we have 56.7 grams of water, we need to know how many moles or how many grams there are in one mole of water. So if you look at a periodic table, you know water is H2O, and each hydrogen is 1, oxygen is basically 16. So you're looking at a uh, relationship that has 18 grams of uh, water per mole. So another way to say that is that 18 grams of water is equivalent to one mole of water. And that's our starting point. So we have to recognize that there's the equivalence once we have an equivalence that has grams and moles, we can, we can, we can change back and forth from exactly. one to the other. Especially since the question wants to know the number of moles in this many grams. So much like any other conversion, we start by writing down the given value, which is 56.7 grams. Uh, and now... How many moles equals 56.7 grams. 
and then I'll use the Mr. Hunter method. So we'll go like this. Don't forget we'll go to put like your this. unit now. It's not just grams; it's also it's grams, grams of water. Of water. It, that is an okay. important factor to keep a. Right, especially on when now. we get into yeah chemical equations where you got four different substances, yeah. you got to specify. So on tests or quizzes, we'll need to see units and the actual molecule it is. So in 56 grams, we know that there are 18 grams uh, per one mole. So I'm going to put the 18 grams down here and the one mole on the top of my fraction. And again, you would have to label them with H2O because Thank very you. few... A very few molecules would have 18 grams as their molecular weight, but still, it matters. Uh, so right there we go. We take 56.7 times 1 divided by 18, and we get 3.15. 3.15. Notice how you kept the same number of significant digits. Exactly. Now you do, because these, this number up there, 56.7, is a measurement, so it needs... So this has Six three figures. significant figures, so we're going to keep three in our answer. The, the molar mass is considered to be a given, given value, yep. so, so there's Fair how you answer. do it. So it's really uh, the same, applying the same method we use for metric conversions to yeah. a new situation. But now if you forget how to convert, we have this uh, mole map or mole island map. Uh, it's basically in the front cover of your, of your packet here. If you're going from mass to moles, it tells you one mole is equal to the molar mass in grams, or vice versa. You can go that way. So it yeah. kind of gives you a road map for solving. All right. So here we have a second example. We're going to take it the other way. We're asking you to determine the mass in 3.42 moles of magnesium chloride. Uh-oh, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> it doesn't tell us the chemical formula. Exactly. So once again, if you can't name, you're not going to be able to succeed here. But for simplicity's sake, uh, magnesium chloride is MgCl2. Because magnesium is plus 2, chloride is minus 1. So magnesium chloride. The formula, or the molecular, I guess it's formula mass in this case, is 95.21 grams. 95 0.21 grams. And you get that from the periodic table. Cl2. And that's equal to one equals mole. Equals one mole. Now again, MG. we set up the CL. fence post given the Two. given first. So it's going to be 3.42 moles. Uh, Alright, we'll use your... MgCl2. And then at the bottom there, you have to have it so your moles cancel. So one mole on the bottom of MgCl2. 95.21 grams MgCl2. The moles are going to divide out. And then your calculator would tell you an answer of 325.618. Grams. But of course, we have to keep the same number of sig figs. Our original number has three. So our final answer also has to have three. So it's going to be 326 grams of magnesium chloride. There you have it. And our last example, uh, they want to know a chemist needs to measure out 0.614 moles of silver nitrate. How many grams does she need to measure? So again, you have to be able to know silver nitrate. Silver is a plus one. Nitrate is a minus one. So it's going to turn out to be Ag NO3 in the end. Uh, the molar mass for this is 169.87. Grams per one mole. All right, so we get started. So we're going to use my method here now, sure. which is the same thing. How many grams are we going to need to get 0 0.614 moles of AgNO3? Okay, so we're going to install the correct conversion factor here mm -hmm. so we've got moles so we want to put our one mole on the bottom of AgNO3 and the equivalent number of grams to a mole which is 169.87 grams 
or silver nitrate. Moles cancels out. You hit the calculator, it tells you your answer is 104.300. Of course, we know we're basing it on how good the measurement, original measurement was. So we're going to round that to 104 grams of AgNO3, silver nitrate. And that's the end of this part of the conversions. Of course, there are several others, especially when we get in the next unit. But it's, it's a never-ending stoichiometry cha challenge now. But, you know, the, the, if, you, if you can... Recognize you've got the equivalence relationship. Build the conversion factor to get to get to the unit you want to. It's it's they they all end up working out very similar. Uh, you just need to know the conversion facts, yeah. the equivalence relationship. So we'll continue the next lesson uh, with with the next part of the mole island diagram. I think is moles to moles particles. to particles. Yeah. Yep. All right. Have a good night. Alright students, now that we've gotten the lesson on mass to mole conversions, we have two post video questions for you to try out on your own. First one, what's the mass of 0.85 moles of NaCl? That would be sodium chloride. And then the second one's the reverse. How many moles would you have if you had 100.0 grams of MgCl2? So give those a try and we'll discuss them in class next time.